Oh man. For about 18 miles, continue straight. So, on November 13th, 2003, my mother passed away. And so right now it's November 12th, and I'll post this tomorrow in her honor. I try to come visit her at this cemetery every year when she passed where she was buried and it's freezing out here so I don't know how long I'm gonna last I know it's crazy sunny, I'm probably blown out on half my face. Anyway, I just wanted to come out here and talk about my mom a little bit tell a couple of stories I man I don't know what it is but I miss her like crazy the last last couple of weeks I think it has to do with all the craziness that's happening in this country right now and all this bad energy this toxic energy this you know kind of uneasiness that's just pervading everything you know this unknown of what's ahead like are we going to be living in a completely different kind of lifestyle i i don't know what's going on don't worry about me i'll get along forget about me be happy with my love. But, um, I know I miss my mom. I think it's because, you know, I was adopted, right? And so I was separated from my biological mother at my birth. You know, taken away by some stranger in the delivery room and handed to who knows who knows where or with whom or whatever and put in foster care and I lived in three foster homes in the first three months of my life and then I was fostered by my parents who eventually adopted me my mother and my mother's here right next to my father um, and they decided to give me a permanent home you know keep me and uh, I always wondered, you know, like I always, I always knew I was adopted. Like I don't remember the day that they told me that I was adopted. Like I thought everybody was adopted. I actually thought there was a baby store. And I also had this crazy anxiety that, you know, I always felt like there was a possibility that my parents would return me, you know, give me back, send me away. I never really felt quite solid, you know. Lately I find you're on my mind More than any other time since you died I dream about you almost every night I'm feeling kind of empty And then as I got older, I became really difficult, you know, for them 
I was very quiet. I was very kind of solitary. Um, I was I was pretty rough, and uh, it was all because I was kind of insecure. You know, like I almost had that feeling of fight or flight mode all the time. You know, like I wanted to get in front of anything bad that would happen before it happened. So I would kind of, you know, be an asshole before anybody could decide I was an asshole. And I don't know, you know, like I, I had a lot of issues. Floating around, can't find my way. Feeling disconnected more every day. To admit I'm losing my grip I think I might be falling But I'll tell you, you know, my mother and my father, both of them They were so kind to me You know, I don't know if I ever really felt loved Because I don't know if I allowed myself to feel loved You know, like like, I didn't want to just commit to it, you know, and get all the way in there. and Because I felt like it could end at any minute, you know. Any moment could be like the end, you know. And it's funny because, you know, all that stuff happened to me when I was a baby. So why would I even remember that stuff? But I did, you know. And I actually remember being in my grandmother's apartment when I first came home with, you know, when the social worker first dropped me off at home. I remember that and you know I certainly remember our first apartment on Jerome Avenue in the Bronx I remember running up and down the hallway I used to have a towel around my neck you know my mother used a baby pin and pinned the, this thing to my back and I ran around like I was Superman and I was like mommy daddy look look I could fly I could fly I'm like Superman I could fly I can't seem to get myself together I often wonder if I went away If anyone would notice I was gone I thought of that today I think about that most days I just, you know, I have like a really vivid memory of that hallway in my head all the time But I don't know I was, I was very insecure. And then, you know, when we moved out of the city, up here to Spring Valley, I hated my parents for that. Like, I used to spend most of my time in my grandmother's apartment on Rochambeau Avenue, which is where I lived just before I moved back up to Poughkeepsie. You know, there's a great courtyard there. My grandmother had this really nice apartment. I, I became really good friends with these twin brothers, these two kids, and we'd play in the courtyard all the time, and I loved that neighborhood, and the pizza place on the corner, and Marshall Loop Parkway, and, you know, Gun Hill Road, and Bainbridge, and that whole, that was like my hood, you know? And even though I was very young, when we left, I was very, very hurt by that, you know? And I didn't like Spring Valley. You know, I didn't want to live up there. The song is for my mother I adjusted, you know, and my father dropped me off in this park, Memorial Park, and he said, this is where you're going to play, you know, and I, he introduced me to these two guys, these two coaches, Jimmy and Johnny Wolf, and I became a catcher on their baseball team <laughs> when I was really young, you know, like I think the glove was bigger than my head, and they were also my football coaches, and, you know, I, I grew to really love those guys, maybe even more than my folks you know like I kind of felt like I could give in to them because they weren't permanent anyway you know what I mean like they were just my coaches that's where I played and I just became really attached to that and I think that was the last thing that I liked about Spring Valley you know I kind of hated my high school years I really couldn't stand the coaches that I had and the teachers and you know I didn't really have you know I mean I had 
I knew a lot of nice people, but I just felt like it was a very racist town. You know, I noticed the disparity between my black friends and my white friends. You know, like the black people that I knew lived in a completely different world than I lived in. You know, my best friend was black. You know, this guy, Gene, Gene Giles. And uh, we used to talk about it all the time. You know, all through high school, we talked about racism every day. There's nowhere to go. I'm so confused. The answers to my questions never feel like you. But no one I know would believe this is me. I'm feeling so alone now. But we also talked about how we were both going to be professional football players. And Gene actually did wind up playing for the Jets for a minute. You know, and I went off to Colorado State and I played football and he played somewhere in Minnesota. But we talked about how Spring Valley was just horrible. Terrible place. You know, like in many ways a beautiful place because it was the most diverse place you could imagine. It was, you know, kind of like Brooklyn in a lot of ways, you know. Spring Valley was actually the first place that the Hasidic Jews came to in this country, in a place called New Square. There's a lot of, you know, like every kind of nationality lived there. Man, it's so cold, I'm like slurring. But anyway, that is what I loved about Spring Valley. It was so diverse, like everybody lived there. But, you know, the black kids that I grew up with, they were not included in anything. And they lived in a section that was kind of dangerous, a lot of drugs, a lot of violence up in that area. But I was treated so well there. You know, I was at Gene's house all the time. My friend Lynn Pinkston, Jimmy Pinkston, Curtis Pinkston, I was in their apartment all the time. And I was treated so well, you know. And there was never anything about, you know, <clears throat> like I'm the only white boy around or anything like that. Like, there was none of that. You know, I was just their friend. That was it. These were my people growing up. I just can't forget you in that place. Haunted by how long you had to live that way Closing my eyes, I'm losing my way I'm feeling kind of desperate So what does all this have to do with my mother? You know, my mother was somebody who had my back, you know Like, if I can't or won't say that I felt loved, I will say that I felt safe. Like my mother would step in front of a bus for me. You know, actually there's a, there's a steel telephone pole in the middle of Spring Valley that is because of my mother. Like one day we were driving in Spring Valley when we had first moved up there and all of a sudden before I knew it, boom, the car just like exploded against a telephone pole. My mother had an accident. Turned out that the steering wheel in this car, this Rambler, locked up. And also the uh, gas pedal got stuck. You know, there was some kind of problem with the car. She went right into a pole. Back seat went over on top of me and actually protected me. And I just remember my mother going, it's not terrible, it's not terrible, it's not terrible, it's not terrible. And I just heard her breathing like, <laughs> <laughs> it turned out she had broken all of her ribs. And it, it was like the scariest thing ever. But we both survived. But I just remember my mother saying to the uh, ambulance guys, is my son okay? Is my son okay? Is my son okay? Like she just kept saying it over and over and over again. And uh, I just, you know, like, I just remember being a little kid thinking, Wow. You know, she's laid up there. She's like a bloody mess. All her ribs are broken. And she's worried about me. I just can't seem to get my life together. I wonder if I just could disappear. I hope you rest in peace. I hope I never let you down. I thought of that today. That most 
So my mother was a little crazy. She was funny. People loved her. You know, she had a big personality. She was a, a character, to say the least. She was pretty dishonest sometimes, but at, by the same token, she was incredibly honest, too. Like, you know, one time I went to the store with my father and I found a $10 bill on the floor. And I picked it up and we went home. We had gone to the bakery, get some bagels and some black and white cookies, which we did almost every Sunday morning. And uh, my father goes, show your mother what we found. And I showed her the $10 bill. And she looked at my father and she goes, take him back and you return that. He's like, what are you talking about? She goes, take it back. It's not his. Take it back and return it. <laughs> so my father takes me back to the bakery and we bring it back. Which, you know, it's a $10 bill. Like, the guy's just going to keep it. But, you know, my mother said it was dirty money. And to never keep dirty money. Meanwhile, years later, my mother was the woman who would like, you know, she looked at shopping as like a competitive sport. And she would go into the store and like switch tags and get the cheaper prices. And like, she was crazy. She was like, you know... For people who are as old as I am, she was like Lucy. You know, she was nuts. She was like pretty, pretty interesting and fun. And, you know, all of my friends who met her, they loved her because she was, she was Phyllis Wilk. You know, she was, she was that Jewish lady from the Bronx, you know. She was a st great storyteller, as pretty much everybody in my family was. You know, my grandmother who was my best friend growing up. She was the best storyteller I've ever known. My father was an incredible storyteller and as was my mother. She told great stories. So anyway, you know what, it's freezing. Um, I just wanted to come up here and see her today. Um, and uh, yeah. I don't know, it feels difficult this year for me. But I'm glad I came. I live about 45 minutes from here now. And uh, I gotta be in the city this week, so I'm gonna go by our apartment, visit the block, go back to the last place I lived, see all my friends. I just left there a couple of years ago. I kind of miss living in the Bronx quite a bit, but I mean, I don't, I don't really miss a city all that much because New York City is not my city anymore. It's so different. It's changed so much. Anyway, I'm all over the place. I'm freezing and I'm just kind of like, I don't know, my mind is not right lately. So Phyllis Wilk, I miss you so much. I wish I could take you to dinner, go up to West Point with you. Go to the Hotel Thayer or, you know, go down to Arthur Avenue and have dinner at Ann and Tony's on 187th Street in the Bronx. We can hang out and talk and I could ask your advice and take none of it. So you would call me an asshole. That's somebody who asks for advice and never takes it. She'd always say, don't be an asshole. <laughs> I miss her a lot. So... Damn, she's been gone 21 years, and I think to myself, do I even have 21 years left of my life? It's crazy. So, onward we go. Please subscribe. Please hit the like button. Please consider joining my Patreon. If not for me, do it for my mother. <laughs> How's that for being manipulative? Anyway, thanks for being here with me. I appreciate that. All right, let's get out of here. It's freezing. That's it. So is for my mother. I swear to God you should have known her. I can't get through to my sister or my brother. Cause they won't speak to one another. Sister or my brother Cause they
story goes. Da 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 da. We'll still be friends.